Time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R Lounge. What do you do when your parents think you owe them everything because they gave birth to you and sacrificed everything for you growing up? Today in the R Lounge, your house, your rules. Parents broke into my house when I was away saying, I owe them. I evicted and cut them off financially. I'm at a breaking point and I really need some advice. So I was away for a month and my parents thought it was the best opportunity to break into my house. My life has become a mess for the last one year and my parents have made it worse. At the start of this year, I broke up with my girlfriend of 10 years. We were supposed to have a summer wedding and I broke up after the holidays when I discovered something very awful about her, the kind that can turn your whole world upside down. Without going into details, let's just say it wasn't something I could take. I walked out of the relationship. In a matter of days, my future was ripped out from under me. After the breakup, I went through a bitter phase of feeling completely lost. I didn't know who I was outside of that relationship. Came to the summer and the wedding date. It made me miserable. I thought I would spend a month in Michigan in nature's peace and calm, but when I came back, I saw my parents had squatted in. They always had an eye for my house, and my absence felt like the perfect opportunity for them to break in. You see, I don't come from an affluent family. We lived in a rented house. My parents worked hard to raise me and my sister. I will forever be grateful to them for everything they have done for me. However, this doesn't mean they start demanding stuff beyond my means. Buying a house is one of the demands I've been dodging for years. Now, I don't know how to say this politely, so I'll just be blunt. My parents have always been difficult. Ever since I started earning, they've expected me to cater to their needs and make their lives easier. They'd always say things like, We sacrificed everything for you, so you owe us. They drop subtle hints that I should buy them a house, but I never address the elephant in the room. Because, hey, I cannot afford it. After working my butt off for more than a decade, when my ex-girlfriend and I decided to get married, I thought, why not get a house first and then settle? When I broke this news to my parents, they were not thrilled. It definitely made them salty. Their dream of having a house kind of got shattered. Now that I bought one for myself, I cannot have another one for them. But they always wanted my house ever since I bought it two years ago. The first time they visited my place, they were just like, I wish our house also had this kind of kitchen, this kind of decor, or this kind of ceiling. Just a week after that visit, mom called me asking for some money to renovate their house. I was confused by their demands, like they live in a rented house. Why would they renovate it? It's on the owner, right? She said it was about the decor. They wanted to have some makeshift fancy ceilings and furniture and other decorative items for the house. I said I just made a big purchase. I'm not in a position to lend such a huge amount. She guilt tripped me saying, We have been living in a poor condition. Everything we own in this house is old and rusting. Don't we deserve new stuff? I stood firm and declined the request. I had a reason. I told them I was getting married in a year and I'm saving for that. They weren't pleased that I was prioritizing my life over their selfish demands. I heard from a cousin that my father was telling someone that I only cared about myself, bought a house and saving for my marriage, and not for them. I didn't take it seriously because, you know, extended family tends to enjoy this gossip. However, I saw their actual face when they got to know about my breakup. At first, they rushed to console me, showing how much they cared for me. I was miserable. I didn't leave the bed for a week. Mom volunteered to stay and take care of me. How sweet of her, right? Hold on. A week later, she dropped the bombshell. It was like, Now that you're single, you do not need the whole space. So we were thinking we would just move in with you. If this was not enough, she suggested, Or maybe you could eventually find a smaller place for yourself. This is the kind of house we always dreamt for ourselves. Imagine your parents trying to snatch your house while you're dealing with a pathetic breakup. My success was their success in their eyes. They saw my house as the house I should be sharing with them as if it was a family's house. I picked myself up and said I was fine and I needed to live alone. She eventually left, but not without my father advising me to move out of the house in order to move on from the breakup faster because the house might haunt me with the memories of my girlfriend. I was so pissed off at this. I mean, I broke up. My girlfriend didn't die that the house would haunt me. Yes, certain places of the house do remind me of her, the memories we made together. This doesn't mean I give away my house to them. Fast forward to this summer. I decided to take a break from all the stress and drama in my life and spend a quiet month in Michigan. I needed to clear my head to get away from the ghosts of my relationship and family drama for a while. The vacation was good. However, when I got back and as soon as I opened the door, I realized something was off. I found dirty dishes in the sink, shoes scattered in the hallway, and a bunch of my stuff had been moved around. I was crap scared thinking someone had broken inside my house. I carefully went inside the room to find my dad's clothes hanging in the closet and my mom's toiletries cluttering the bathroom counter. 
They even put up their wedding portrait in my bedroom. It was a relief to know that it was them and not someone dangerous. You'd bet it turned out to be worse. I cursed myself for my carelessness. I had a security camera installed in my house. A few days into the trip, I realized it wasn't working. I thought I had switched off the power supply by mistake and the camera ran out of their battery. I wasn't careful enough to check everything properly before leaving. The story turned out to be a different. We'll come to it. I immediately called my mom to ask about this. She was at work and said she would discuss it in the evening. Then she entered the house pretending as if nothing had happened. She came to give me a hug and asking me about the trip. I blocked her and asked what they were doing in my house. She sighed at me, sat down on the couch and took forever to say this. Well, we thought to move in here to take care of the house. You didn't tell us about your return. Your dad was worried about leaving the house vacant for so long. I was like I had the camera installed and she snapped in between, which was so easy to switch off. I couldn't believe they had deliberately switched it off because they didn't want to bother me during the trip. I said, whatever be it, I don't want them in my house and they should leave. In the middle of this conversation, she said, you know what? I'm tired. Can we please talk on the weekend? You must be tired too. Have some rest. I couldn't believe she just walked into my bedroom and said, and by the way, your dad liked this room, so we've shifted your stuff to the other one. And shut the door behind her. I knocked and insisted I need to talk right now, but she just answered from behind the closed door. Not now. I was fuming at this point. Then, hours later, Dad arrived. He walked inside the house and immediately snapped at me. How could you be so careless? You left the house for the crooks to break in. It took me a minute to manipulate your stupid camera. It came off so abruptly that for a moment I thought he was right. I replied, you guys cannot just barge into my house and gaslight me. You were able to do whatever stuff you did with the camera because you knew where it was installed and from where the power connection was going. A crook wouldn't have known that, and this cannot be a reason for occupying my house. Mom came out of the room and said, Oh dear lord, you're still stuck on this. The fact is you left your house unsecured and we got it for you. Say thank you and move on. I said, alright, thank you, and please move out. Dad got furious. Why are you being so rude? I understand breakup sucks, but it's been more than half a year. Get over it. Your girlfriend might already be seeing someone, and here you're sulking over the past. I said, this has nothing to do with my breakup. I'm asking this with all my kindness and calmness. Thank you for taking care of my house and my absence. Now I'm back. I can handle it. So when do you guys plan to leave? They looked at each other in disbelief. Dad asked me if I was throwing them out. I said, I'm not throwing them out. I'm requesting them to leave me alone. I want my privacy. Mom quickly jumped in saying it's a two bedroom house and I won't need so much space since I'm single. It felt like a dagger in my wounds. I stormed into the other room where they had shifted my stuff. I decided to sleep over the situation and address it freshly on the weekend. After I calmed down, I tried to have a rational conversation with them. I explained that this was my home, my space, and that they had no right to invade it. They didn't take it well. My dad started saying that as their son, it was my duty to take care of them. My mom chimed in with the sacrifices they'd made and how they'd always put me first. They sent me to school beyond their means to secure my future. Every time I'd try to reason out their decision, they'd bring up something from my childhood to guilt me further. I can't really believe their audacity. I just couldn't wrap my head around the fact that they had moved in, without asking, without telling me, and apparently without planning on leaving. The worst part? They try to turn this around by saying I'm being selfish that I'm lucky to have a family who wanted to take care of me after my breakup. They'd turned my heartbreak into an excuse to invade my life and make it theirs. How do I even deal with this emotional manipulation? I'm sure I don't want to have them in my house, but they're my parents. How do I just throw them out? Don't be harsh if I miss seeing the obvious solution. I'm dealing with a lot mentally. I can't have it anymore. You've been through the ringer with the breakup, and instead of respecting your need for space, they've apparently decided to plant a flag in your house, like they're claiming new territory. But here's the thing. This is your house, not theirs. They've done the emotional equivalent of giving you a guilt trip as a housewarming gift, but it's time to set some boundaries that don't involve them moving in. Update 1. God, I got some 50 plus comments saying, eviction notice, with multiple exclamations. Guys, I knew this was an option, but I didn't want to take it this far. Sadly, my parents left me with no other choice. After weeks of talking to them and trying to convince them, I knew I had to do something drastic to reclaim my space. My parents didn't seem like they were planning on leaving anytime soon, and I realized that without some legal action, they'd likely try to wear me down emotionally until I gave in. So, I consulted a lawyer, and he recommended that I file an eviction notice. Now, I knew that was going to set off a firestorm, but I didn't see any other choice. This wasn't just about the house anymore. It was about my right to set boundaries and have them respected. When I presented the eviction notice, they went ballistic. 
My mom broke down in tears saying I was treating them like criminals. My dad looked at me with this disgust that I'd never seen before. They accused me of abandoning my family and they even said that I was kicking them out like strangers. I stood firm on my grounds and clarified that I was just reclaiming my privacy. The days following the eviction notice were absolute hell. They tried every tactic in the book, from endless guilt tripping to random gaslighting, and then out of nowhere, my dad would launch into a lecture about duty to family. He would just sob and shed tears talking about the days when he did two jobs to pay for my education. My mom would join in echoing about her struggles in raising me while working full time. They made the situation so worse that I had to tiptoe my way into my own house to avoid bumping into them. If this was not enough, they even got my sister involved. She called me out of nowhere to lecture me about the importance of having a family in life and saying I was being too harsh. She said things like, How can you do this to the people who raised you? I shot back at her. What did you do? They raised you too. You hardly visit them or take care of them, so you have no right to do any moral policing for me. She didn't hesitate to scratch my wound, saying, You see, at the end of the day, it's the parents who stood with you at tough times. You bought a house to secure your girlfriend's future, but what did she do to you? You've still not learned your lesson, did you? I hung up the call, saying I don't want a family who's trying to exploit my misery for their gain. It even involved my uncle, who visited me one evening and tried to impart his two cents that I should take care of my parents. He tried to guilt trip me by reminding me of all the sacrifices my parents made to raise me. I don't get the BS. Parents bring up a child into the world and raise them on their own wish, and when the child grows up, suddenly they demand the same sacrifices from their child. I don't know how much it's fair. To me, it's freaking disgusting. After weeks of stress and emotional manipulations, they finally left. I just wish this is the end, but how much I know them, it's not. I'm sure they would come back pulling other tactics from their sleeves. I sometimes want to sell this house and vanish. I don't believe in such stuff, but sometimes I feel this house is the cause of all the troubles in my life. I've never been happy in this place. Is this kind of feeling even logical? Have you guys felt such stuff? The eviction notice thing was definitely the nuclear option, but hey, you tried everything else. You've got every right to want to sell it and leave. Honestly, at this point, it's less about the house and more about the emotional baggage attached to it. If you think selling it and starting fresh is the right move, I say go for it. I wouldn't blame you for wanting to cut ties with the source of all the chaos, OP. Update 2 I missed adding one important point. There's something else that's been happening for years. I've been sending my parents financial support. Not massive, but a significant monthly amount to help them pay their bills. I thought it was just a kind of thing to spare a few grand on them since I was earning quite well. People who are commenting that I was too harsh on my parents, let me tell you guys this wasn't the first time they tried to blur the line between help and ownership. Just after a year of me getting into a job, they asked to borrow money from my savings account, which I had set aside for my future. They said it was an emergency and as always I complied. Instead of paying it back like they promised, they'd just let it slide. When I tried to bring it up, they brushed it off, saying they'd get around to it. Mom was like, can't believe you're keeping a tab on these nickels and dimes when you earn in bombs. I was by no means earning in bombs. It's decent, I agree. However, it doesn't mean I can waste it at a whim. I'd been helping my parents financially for as long as I could remember. After everything that happened, I felt betrayed. I couldn't justify continuing to support people who thought it was okay to take over my life without my consent and exploit me during my vulnerable times. So I stopped the payments. I didn't give them a warning, just cut it off. When they were staying at my place, they were already using my groceries and other utilities. I don't eat restaurant foods, I'm allergic to certain ingredients. I try to have self-made foods as much as possible so my kitchen is always loaded with groceries. The point is, they didn't need extra money from when they lived with me. When they left, I cut off all ties with them, including the monthly allowance. It was stupid of me to think they wouldn't bother me after everything that happened. Boy was I wrong. A month later, I heard them banging on my door. They were furious. They demanded to know why the money hadn't reached them when it was already one week into the month. At this point, I could only laugh at their entitlement. I said the money didn't hit their account because they didn't send it. Mom yelled, And may I know the reason why? I also played along and said, I don't wish to. They were seething. I said I don't intend to have any sort of relationship with them, let alone this one-sided entitlement game. I'd help them out of choice, but that choice was off the table now. As expected, they tried to guilt trip me into resuming the payments. My mom kept talking about the sacrifices they'd made, how they'd worked so hard to give me everything. My dad kept saying the blood is thicker than water and that I was throwing my family away over a house. But here's where things got intense. My dad suddenly threw in a new twist. He started talking about how my ex-fiance had probably left because I was too selfish. 
he actually had the gall to say that maybe if I had been less focused on my own life and more committed to family, she'd still be here. I stood there in absolute shock. How could they talk crap about such a sensitive issue? They knew I had been struggling mentally to get over this, and they made such a cruel remark about that. At that moment, something clicked in me, and all the resentment I'd held back for years just poured out. I told them everything, how I'd felt manipulated my whole life, how they'd never respected my choices or boundaries, that I was done being a puppet. I told them that I needed to live my life on my terms and that they were free to do the same. Mom said, You only know to play the victim. That's why you're left alone. Maybe you're the one who's punishing everyone out of your dang life. Work on yourself before you're left to die alone in a deserted house. I just couldn't take it anymore. I asked them to leave right away. They were still staring at me, thinking I would apologize or maybe take my words back, but I just walked out of the house. I stood outside the door and asked them to leave. They had no choice but to leave, cursing me under their breath. Hours later, my sister still called me. I ignored it. I knew the context of the call. Then she texted me, saying that I'm too extreme and that I need to apologize and make things right. Basically, they want me to go back to how things were, to just keep sending money and let my parents have their way. But I can't. For the first time in my life, I feel free. I no longer feel like I'm constantly indebted to someone. I can focus on building a life I want without feeling guilty about saying no. And honestly, it feels good. I don't know if I'll ever reconcile with my parents, and maybe one day I'll regret cutting them off as they claim. For now, I feel like I'm finally living for myself, not for anyone else's approval. It sounds like you've finally set some boundaries that you let breathe again. That's a huge step. As for the guilt trips from your sister and parents, well, they're likely just upset that you no longer their emotional support punching bag. But if you're going to move forward in your own life, you can't keep carrying everyone else's baggage with you. It's hard to cut ties with family, but this is totally necessary. Have you ever had to cut ties with family? What happened? Share your stories with us in the comments. And thank you for joining us today in the R Lounge. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time, and please put your chair back where you found it.